breaking things. Always breaking things. That's true. They did call me the Great Destroyer. <laughs> Bobby's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artist. Welcome to the video that first happens in 2020. No, I guess this would be the second video. Welcome to the second video. It doesn't quite have the impact. <laughs> no. Welcome to the second video. <laughs> yeah! Woo All right, great destroyer. Are you ready to film this? Yeah, I'm always ready for destruction and filming. <laughs> So uh, we have a question from somebody, right? So yeah, we do. Let's let's get let's get our year started by not being ridiculous. I think this is a great question to start off 2020 with. Okay. Our question comes from Kitty Kai Zen. Hey, Kitty Kai Zen. Hi guys, I'm a visual artist and I've been watching a ton of your videos for my exhibit prep. I really value all your input and especially your motivational segments because I didn't have that growing up. Aww. Here's my question. How do you balance time for all of your artistic endeavors? I and many artists love many types of art, but struggle to find time for the ones that aren't the core of our business. That is a brilliant question, especially on the heels of the last video that we did yeah. uh, for the new year, because last year was quite challenging. We had a lot of projects going on. Yeah, and the truth is, I don't know any artists that are not interested in multiple things. The problem is that a lot of artists are told that you should focus on just one thing and th th it, that should be become a master yeah, of that people one are like, thing. Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious because that is actually supposed to be a compliment, right? What, yeah. what is it? Jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. It was intended as a compliment. Yeah, see, booyah for whoever <laughs> says that. I think the biggest challenge is being able to balance all those things because a lot of the artwork that we work on is very uh, labor intensive. If I'm working on a painting or I'm writing a book, or I am doing a video that all of these things take a lot of work. And yeah, and a lot of artists struggle to just do their one thing and balance that with their lives. Yeah, with their lives, especially, you know, like if they have kids or they have other responsibilities or they have another job. No matter what it is that you're doing, you have to find the joy in it. And I think that that is the secret to being able to do multiple projects instead of just focusing on one. A lot of the projects that I work on, I work on them because it's something that I feel passionate about. So I make the time to do it because this is all I do for a living, which is, you know, create art and stuff. I try to split my week up into days of creation and sometimes even those days are split up into certain segments. So maybe early in the morning I may work on commissions and work on paintings and then later that afternoon I'll work on my book. And the trick is to be able to work on something and then walk away and work on something else while that thing is on pause. So to be able to shift gears. Yeah, to shift gears. And the, the trick is that you walk away at a point where you'd have to wait anyway. So for me, it's when I'm working in between layers of paintings where um, I could either sit there and watch paint dry or I could walk away and, and work on a different project. Watching paint dry is not riveting, so I can understand yeah. that. Yeah, you don't, you don't really want to make a career of watching paint dry. I definitely reach stopping points with my work also. I don't have to watch many things dry in the jewelry field, but there are stopping points where I'm either not sure or I just need to take a break and I'll go focus on something else. Yeah. And yeah. I also give myself dedicated days like you do, like music days and such. Essentially what you're doing is you're giving yourself permission to work on this thing. Like you said in the question, a lot of those things are the core of your business. So for example, with me, um, I've got uh, two days during the week that are dedicated to editing video. And then we film video sporadically throughout the week, depending on what topic pops up or what it is that we want to film. And then I have full days during the week like that are dedicated to working on my artwork or doing any kind of writing. And then I have one day that I dedicate to business stuff, the website and doing uh, t-shirts and updating the store online and different things like that, which are still very artistic, but those things need to get done. So I give myself days to be able to do it. And then I have several free days that I 
do anything that yeah. I want to. And I also have stuff that I enjoy doing, but like it's more of a sporadic thing. So like maybe once a month I have like a sewing project that I'm working on. Or pretty soon I'm taking a class, uh, a needle felting class. And that's just a one-day thing, but it's something I'm interested in. Yeah, because guess what she's going to be making? You oh. guys know our little cute of goggles? A goggles, a goggles, they think you're amazeballs. She's going to make little furry a goggles. They're going to be so fluffy. Uh -huh. Pretty much, if you are working on a project, and I understand because a lot of times there are certain projects that I will put the other projects aside until I get that project finished, and it may take me about three or four days to work on that and get it done. But because I keep those days in mind, I know that, okay, if I'm going to work on this for three days, then I need to compensate for that and make the other things a priority when I'm done with that project. It's not putting things off uh, indefinitely. It is putting things off temporarily until you could get to them when you're done with that project. It's still, there's a lot of balancing and tweaking that goes on. You also have to remind yourself that sometimes during a day, there's plenty of hours where you could work on one project in the morning and another project at night. And sometimes you don't have time for things and that's okay too. Yep. So basically what we're saying is, Block out time for the things that you want to do and even make yourself a schedule for it like we do. But we're on like Mach 154 yeah. of our schedule, but we keep tweaking it so that it works for us. Yeah. And also be willing to be flexible because you don't know what's going to happen during a day. In my book, I talk about something called the Fantastic Four list. And basically what that is, it's four things that you want to get accomplished. So for example, if I am working on a book, but I have paintings and different things going on, um, the, the book will make it onto that list. And it's just a reminder of the fact that, yes, this is one of the things that I want to work on, that I want to accomplish. Or if it is like a new sculpture or just something that I don't typically do. As far as working on more than one kind of thing, uh, that's, that's what I mean when I say push outside of your comfort zone. And I understand if you have like a busy lifestyle and you have to make time and you're already managing your time in a, in a very tight way, but there's always the possibility of being able to play around with that and move things around and make sure that you remove whatever things you actually don't want to do out of your schedule because that matters as well. Get rid of the fluff. Get rid of the fluff. The, the unfun kind of fluff, not the fun fluff like fluffy goggles fluff. Yeah. So long story short, if you want to make time, find a way to make time. And remember, you don't have to dedicate entire days to things. You could dedicate a block of hours here and a block of hours there to your different projects. But make sure that you give yourself some kind of semblance of a flexible schedule that you could work with so you could work on multiple projects. I think this was such an awesome question. Thank you, Kitty Kaizen, for your question. Yeah, thank you so much for that. We hope that we answered your question. Yeah, I, I know that this was this was definitely a ramble because <laughs> this is still something that we're working on and we have somewhat of a grip on it, but it's still a work in progress. Yeah. And honestly, I'd love to hear you guys if you have any tips as far as like balancing several things at once and how it is that you handle that. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.